before we go, like a lot of you, I've been thinking a lot about Afghanistan and its people today. I traveled across Afghanistan on reporting assignments in 2010 and 2012, and some things just stick with you. Traveling across Afghanistan a decade into the war, it was hard not to feel some optimism, as if we were witness to a country emerging from darkness. Tonight, watching these chaotic and menacing scenes, I think about the young girls I met, kids being kids at a place they called Skatistan. Growing up in a post-Taliban world, it still makes me smile. I'm thinking, too, about the Afghan family who invited me into their home. This is uh, my son's. Two dads bonding over our shared hope for peace and safety for those whom we love. I wonder where his daughters are today. My first trip was during one of the war's bloodiest years, 2010. I think about those Americans we watched loaded on stretchers aboard a medevac flight one chilly night, and the amazing heroes dedicated to bringing wounded Americans home alive. There's a lot of pride in taking our troops home, taking care of them. Two years later, on another visit, American commanders were eager to share with us tangible symbols of progress. We watched American instructors teach Afghan commandos who would one day fight for their country. I wonder how many survived the war or where they are tonight. And near Kandahar, I saw where the Taliban faced their own humiliation. Over here is the mosque where Mullah Omar in 1994 established the Taliban. Today, it too is lost. Through the war, epic American-led battles reclaim cities and villages from the Taliban. U.S. commanders nurtured trust among village elders, believing in Afghanistan's future. And now, in the chaos, we're left to wonder how that future has been so rapidly rewritten with chapters from Afghanistan's past. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.